two more hours. Right. Takes exactly two hours to get to Abbotsville from that last turn we just made. I remember timing it the first time we came to Uncle Jim. I wish it were a little closer. This is without a doubt the roughest road in the entire state of California. Abbotsville, ain't you? That's right. Well, you ain't gonna make it on this road. Why not? Morning, ladies. The Canyon Creek Bridge is out. Out? Collapsed sometime during the night. Well, I ain't surprised. What with them heavy ore wagons using it the way they do? Guess we'll just have to turn around. Isn't there another road into Abbotsville? Well, you get there through Tyler's Cut, but that's 35 miles out of the way. What about it, driver? Sorry, miss. I got to connect with the eastbound mail train out of Parkersburg. You got to go back to Lake Junction and then through the valley. Well, I guess there's only one thing for us to do. Go back to Lake Junction and rent a buggy. Well, that's a mighty hard road through Tyler's Cut, ma'am. I wouldn't try it if I was you. I don't see how it could be any rougher than this road. But thanks for the warning. Get up! What happened? The ladies are going to hire a livery at Lake Junction and go by way of Tyler's Cut. They'll be late getting to Abbotsville, but they'll get there. have another talk with Seth Duncan. He spent an hour telling me about his new grandchildren. And another half hour raving about a shipment of caviar he just got from Russia. When I got to talking about the loan, he suddenly remembered an appointment he had with his tailor. Dad, why do you keep wasting your time? Now, you know there isn't a bank in the country that's going to lend money on silver these days. And I don't want you begging Seth Duncan for help. We've kept the mine running so far, haven't we? Yes, yes, but... Uh... Now, no buts about it. That mine's operating. It's going to keep on operating. I promise you that. Well, I just... Now, Dad, why don't you go back to work? I'll talk to you later. All right, sir. All right. This is Barkley. Nice to see you. Oh, oh, Eric, how are you? Audra, my goodness. Look it's been you. a long time. Three years. Yes, you were just about to join some law firm in San Francisco. <laughs> That's right. And Dad talked me into coming back here and opening up an office of my own. Uh, well, may I invite you to join me for lunch? Oh, no, thank you. I'm sure Jim is waiting for us in the hotel. Uh, he's not there, Mrs. Barkley. Are you sure? Positive. Well, we're hours late. Well, we better get on to the ranch, then. Oh, Mrs. Barkley, I... I don't think that would be advisable. Oh? It's, uh... It's, uh, your brother-in-law. He's ill. Ill? It's his mind. His mind? That happened just a couple of months ago. Jim and I had been to Arizona to look over some of his holdings. One day, well, about a week after we came back, he, uh... Well, what, Eric? What? 
He tried to kill his foreman. Mike Newcomb? Mike was working in the barn. Jim came storming in, babbling something about Mike trying to ruin him by poisoning his cattle. He went after Mike with a bailing hook. He had him down, he would have killed him if some of the hands hadn't been close by. Since then, we've had to keep Jim confined to his room. You mean he's kept locked up? I'm sorry, but we had no other choice. Mrs. Barkley, I know what a shock this must be to you. But I'm afraid your brother-in-law is hopelessly insane. I, I, I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand why we weren't told about this. Well, I suppose I should have. I kept putting it off, thinking that maybe Jim would recover. Or at least show some signs of improvement. Then when I got your letter to him, well, I get all of his mail now. Saying that you were stopping here in Abbotsville on your way to a wedding in San Francisco. I decided to wait until you arrived so I could, well, break the news to you in person. Would, um... Would you drive us out to the ranch? Certainly. If you're sure that's what you want to do. I took the liberty of reserving rooms for you here at the hotel. I thought you might prefer staying here under the circumstances. No, no. I want to see Jim under any circumstances. All right. I'll get my rig. He's up there. I want to see him. Well, Dr. Morley's with him now. Dr. Morley? Yes. Oh, uh, he's new in town. He's a young man who knows a lot about modern medicine. Well, what happened to Dr. Pierce? Oh, Dr. Pierce? Oh, he's still around. He'll go on forever, I suppose. But uh, Dr. Pierce is a little old-fashioned. I felt Jim should see somebody who knows more about this sort of thing. Come on. Come on into the living room. We seldom use this room since Mr. Jim took sick. I've always loved this house. Oh, it's been home to Mike and me for a lot of years now. I don't really know what we'll do when it comes time to leave. Now, Mrs. Newcomb, let's not think about that. Mr. Barkley needs you and Mike now more than he ever has. The Newcombs have been very loyal through all this. Well, I just wish I could do more. It's hard just to stand by and see a fine man like Mr. Jim. But I better see about supper. You'll stay and have it with us, Mr. Eric? Well, it's very kind of you, Mrs. Newcomb. Thank you. Oh, if I'm not intruding. Not at all. Well, then, I'll just get things started. So I've given him an injection. He'll quiet down now. Dr. Morley, this is uh, Mrs. Victoria Barkley and her daughter, Audra. How do you do? I'd like to see him. I can't permit that, Mrs. Barkley. For your own safety, he's much too upset. When can we? Well, I'm not sure. The doctor, they have to catch the morning stage to San Francisco. Wouldn't it be possible for them to... Well, you know as well as I do how unpredictable Mr. Barkley's moods are, Eric. I'm afraid we'll just have to wait and see how he is in the morning. Well, now, I must be getting along. I'll walk out with you, Doctor. Yes, I'll be back in the morning before you leave. Would you like to freshen up before supper? Yes, thank you. I'll have your bags brought right up. like that. 
He paces and paces and paces for hours on end, up and down, back and forth like a... No, thank you. Not for me. No, me, thank you. I'll just finish what I have and run, if you forgive me. I promised Dad I'd stop by the office tonight. How is your father, Eric? Well, these are pretty rough times for him, Mrs. Barclay. Yes, I guess his silver mine is the only one in the state that hasn't shut down. They'll never shut him down. You know Dad and how he feels about Abbotsville. This is his town. He started it. He built it. He's poured his whole life into it. Let me tell you something you might not know. My father lost a fortune in the crash of 66, and again in 71. But the mine and the stamp mill didn't shut down for one day. He kept the men working, and he kept Abbotsville alive. I know the story. Your father is a fine man. Yes, he is, Mrs. Barclay. They don't come any finer. Well. I'd better be getting along. Oh, now, I'll see if Grace can use some help. Order, take uh, Eric to the door. Eric, very nice seeing you. Well, I wish it could have been under happier circumstances. So do I. I'm sorry, you have to leave tomorrow. I am, too. You were very close to your uncle, weren't you? Used to talk a lot about you. Well, about your brothers, too, but mostly about you. One didn't know better, one would have thought that you were Jim's daughter. In a way, I was after my father died. He and Uncle Jim were so much alike. This was a second home to me. It was such a warm, busy, gay place. <laughs> Yes, there was always something happening. A party, a barbecue, a picnic. Except after Aunt Ellen died. I spent that summer here. We rode and took long walks and sat out on the porch in the evening. Sometimes we talk, other times we just sit. And I realized I was the one person in the world he wanted to be with. I was only 15, but it was the first time anyone really needed me. Look, Audra, I know how much you want to see your uncle. But if you want my opinion, you won't do it. You won't know him the way he's changed. And he probably won't know you. Wouldn't you rather remember the man you did know? Think about it. Goodbye, Audra. Goodbye. Ben, Mrs. Newcomb invited me to stay to supper. And I'll bet you haven't had a thing to eat. All right, let's go get you some. I don't want anything. Hey, come on, partner. Quit worrying. How did Mrs. Barkley take the news? First some supper, then we'll talk. We'll talk now. Well, she took it about as I expected. She wants to see Jim, naturally. But she won't. There just won't be enough time before she and Audrey have to catch the morning stage. Morley will see to it. Are you sure? Suppose he can't. Oh, Dan. I know Victoria Barkley, Eric. So do I. She's no fool. Far from it. If she ever suspects... She won't. <sighs> oh. 
I... I can't let you do this for me, Eric. This is my problem. Dad, Dad, Dad. Dad, one of the first things I ever remember you telling me when I was a boy is that I would never have a problem that wasn't our problem. Yours and mine. And that's the way it's always been. Eric, and this time it's my turn, Dad. I want to tell the truth. But you'd be ruined. Dad, don't you understand? Everything you've worked for your whole life would end up nothing. I'm not going to let that happen to you, Dad. I'll never let that happen to you. Now, let's go home, huh? Miss Barkley, I didn't mean to frighten you. I just got back from town, saw the barn doors open, thought it might be a prowler. Well, it was it was so warm I couldn't sleep. I came out for a breath of fresh air. Pretty warm night, all right. I'm sure glad you and Miss Audra came. Might help, Mr. Jim, you and your family being his only living relatives. Eric and the doctor don't seem to think so. They believe he's beyond help. It could be. 
pretty bad with him. I guess maybe uh, Mr. Eric or Grace told you how he came at me with the bail hook. That must have been a terrible experience for you. I don't blame him. Wasn't the man I'd known all these years. Just some poor, kill crazy animal that didn't know what he was doing. Mike, what happened to the horses? Mr. Jim sold them. His pal of me knows when. Right after he took sick. But why? He loved those horses. Why would he get rid of them? Well, I guess you could ask that question about a lot of things he did. All I know is that one day Mr. Eric came to me and told me to sell them for the best price I could get. Eric told you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, he's been sort of running things for Mr. Jim for, well, it's over a year now. He's got full power of attorney and everything. But Mr. Jim did approve of the sale of the horses. Mm -hmm. Mike, this ranch isn't being worked at all, is it? I mean, the bunkhouse empty, the corral overgrown, why? Well, mostly because the men we had left after what Mr. Jim did to me. And you couldn't hire others? Greenhorns and waddies, maybe, but none worth their salt. You've got a spread of your own, Miss Barkley, you know how it is. Place gets a bad name for something, and the good men just... Good night, Mike. Good night, Miss Barkley. Good morning. I thought I'd come out and drive you into town to catch a stage. Well, that was very thoughtful of you, but you needn't have bothered. Mike would have taken us. Well, as a matter of fact, I had to come out anyway. I'm afraid I've got some rather disappointing news for you. Oh? Dr. Morley was called over to Wall River on an emergency. Then he won't be here this morning. I'm afraid not. At least not before you have to leave. He asked me to apologize for him. Is that all he said? No. He told me to tell you that he couldn't permit you to see Jim unless he was present. Look, I'm not sure I agree with him. But if he feels that way, well, I'm afraid that's the way it's going to have to be. Did he say when he would be here? No. This afternoon, perhaps? Well, he didn't say. I just don't know. Well, there's nothing for us to do but wait and see. Uh, but your stage leave... We won't be taking it. Now, what about the wedding? Won't you miss it? Well, there's a 7 o'clock train tonight out of Parkersburg, and that will get us into San Francisco in plenty of time. As a matter of fact, this whole thing may work out much better. It will give me a chance to go into town and see some friends I haven't seen for a long time. Would you like to come with me, Audra? No, thank you. I'll stay here. Well, then I guess I'd better be getting back to town. Look, I can come back and drive you to Parkersburg if you like. Oh, no, no. Mike will take us. Well, then I'll say goodbye again. Eric, uh, Eric, before you go, I'd like to ask you a question. Why did you sell Jim's Palominos? Why? Because Jim told me to. That was after he became ill? Yes. Well, surely you're not letting him run his own affairs in his condition, are you? Oh, of course not. But in a case like this, what difference did it make? You see, the horses didn't mean anything to Jim anymore. Five minutes after he told me to sell them, he couldn't remember that he had ever owned them. But you went ahead and sold them anyway, hmm? Mrs. Barkley, those Palominos were expensive to keep. And with the ranch not working, with everything going out and nothing coming in, I didn't feel that I could afford to be sentimental about a bunch of horses. Well, I suppose you're right. But I wish I had known about the situation here. I would have bought those horses. I know how much they meant to Jim. And we Barclays, well, we put great store in sentiment. I'll remember that the next time. Bye, Mrs. Barclay.
David. Well, 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 Victoria. How nice are to you? see you. Yes, 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 sit down, sit down, sit down. You look fine, just fine. Thank you. How's the family? Everybody's sitting up and taking nourishment? Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. And what can I do for you? You don't need a doctor. I can tell that just looking at you. I came here to talk to you about Jim. How is he? That's what I want to know. I don't know. Uh, I'm not his doctor anymore, you know. There's a new fellow in town, Dr. Morley. What can you tell me about him? Well, I don't know. Nothing much. Came to Abbotsville about two months ago, just about the time that Jim uh, began to fail. Where did he come from? Some sewer camp, I understand. The way these sewer camps have been shutting down lately, this state is going to have almost as many unemployed doctors as it has minors. <laughs> you know, Dr. Morley first set up practice here. I thought he was going to run me right out of business. Him being young, knowing all the new ways of doing things, somehow it hasn't worked out that way. What do you mean? Well, he kind of discourages folks from coming to see him. Talk has it that he has a private income and he doesn't care whether he has any patients or not. Except Jim, apparently. Have you seen Jim? Is that what's bothering you? Among other things. Like what? That I knew nothing about Jim's condition until Audra and I got here yesterday. Now, when was the last time you saw him? Just before he and Eric went on that trip to Arizona. How was he? Fine, as far as I could tell. But that doesn't mean a thing. Jim was in Arizona almost a month. Anything can happen to a man in that time. Doesn't it seem odd to you that um, this man, Morley, was called in after you had been Jim's doctor for years? Uh, to me, it doesn't. I'm an old man, Victoria. And I haven't kept up with the latest developments in medicine. I don't make any bones about it. No. No, my feelings aren't hurt because Eric called in Morley. I think he did the right thing. I might have recommended the same thing myself. I see. Well, I would like to ask a favor of you. What's that? That you see Jim before Audra and I leave here. Now, what good will that do? I don't know, but would you do it? I can't, Victoria. Not without Morley's permission. Amos. And anyway, I'm supposed to be in Lake Junction Amos, today. this is important. All right. I'll discuss it when I get back. No, no, that will be too late. Audra and I will be gone. Well, Lake Junction isn't that far. Huh? I'll be back in a few hours. That was the bridge out. What bridge? The Canyon Creek Bridge. A man flagged down the stage yesterday and said the bridge had collapsed. The Canyon Creek Bridge isn't out. I came across it myself just Amos, yesterday the evening. the man stopped the stage and... Amos. Someone wanted to delay Audra and me in getting to Abbotsville. Or... Perhaps they didn't want us to get here at all. Kind of seemed that way, wouldn't it? Maybe I'd better take a look at Jim. Good. What time are you leaving? We have to leave the ranch at 5 in order to catch the 7 o'clock train. Uh -huh. well, I have to make a call out that way later. I could be by Jim's about 4. Thank you, Amos. Thank you That's very okay. much. on my way to your office. I've just had a talk with Amos Pierce. Oh? About Jim? Yes. I asked Amos to see him. Did he agree? Any objections? No, I have no objections. But Dr. Morley will. Dr. Morley is not in town. And I have no intentions of leaving here until I know more about Jim's condition than I do. Dr. Morley told you. He told us nothing. 
Well, it's not my place to say anything in a case like this. If you want Amos Pierce to see Jim... I do. Well, that's fine with me, Mrs. Barkley. Eric? Mrs. Barkley. <laughs> the buggy around. He says you better leave now or you'll miss your train. I'll take your suitcases out. I can't understand where Amos is. He said he'd be here before five. Mother, why don't we miss the wedding? Oh, no, no, you can't do that. You're maid of honor. Harriet would be terribly disappointed. Well, that can't be helped. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Now, you go on to San Francisco. Mother, Now, I hear don't... me out, hear me out. After the wedding, come right back here. You'll be gone less than 48 hours. And then we can stay on here as long as we want. You'll be sure to send me a telegram after you've seen Uncle Jim. Mm -hmm. It will be waiting for you when you get to San Francisco. Oh, uh, those two bags will stay here. You're not going? Audra is, but I'm staying. Now, Audra, give Harriet my love and tell her how sorry I am. I will. I'll be back Sunday. All right. Have a good time. Can I fix your cup of tea, Mrs. Barclay? No, no, thank you. I'm going to drive into Abbotsville. I was looking for Dr. Pierce. I guess you haven't heard. Along with Jim Barkley, Amos Pierce was one of my father's oldest friends. And I've known Doc Pierce for well, for as long as I can remember anybody. Mrs. Barkley, I am just as shocked by what's happened as you are. And if you're implying that I had anything to do with it. I asked a question. The answer is yes. Yes, it was a coincidence that this happened to Doc Pierce right after you asked him to see Jim. Such coincidences do occur. Mrs. Barkley, it's obvious that you don't trust me. Now, I don't know why. I'm interested in my brother-in-law's welfare. And his estate. Well, come now, Mrs. Barclay, isn't that a fair question? After all, when Jim dies, you will be his sole beneficiary. Well, I'm not exactly a poor relation who needs his money. Oh, that's true. Then what are you getting at? Well, I'm trying to find out what it is that you suspect me of. The thing that comes to mind is that perhaps you think I am mismanaging Jim's financial affairs. So? So you've got an appointment with me for 9 o'clock tomorrow morning to receive a complete accounting of all my transactions with Jim. I want to see Jim, not his ledgers. I'll arrange for that at the same time. All right, Eric. All right. But you and Dr. Morley had better not disappoint me this time. Because I'm going to see Jim before I leave here. Even if it means breaking down his door to do it.
Easy now, Mrs. Parker. Oh. Easy. Eric, I... I... I went into his room. I know, I know. That's why we tried to convince you he was dangerous. Mike and Grace found you unconscious on the floor. Where's Jim now? He's gone. Gone? He ran away. Sheriff Clark and a posse are out looking for him now. Oh, well, I... Now, have... now, you got to rest, Mrs. Barker. You've got to rest. I want you to take this medicine. It'll help you to sleep. I'll, I'll... Dr. Morley prescribed this for Grace. It'll start working right away. What is it? Your ring. My ring? It wasn't Jim. It was you! You! Run! Shut up! about what happened here last night is all over town. How could I stay away? Look, I want you to go home and stay out of it. Let me handle it. What are you going to do? Please, just go home. Well, tell me. All right. Victoria Barkley knows it was me in a room last night. What else does she know? Isn't that enough? I'm going to tell the truth, Eric. Oh, Dad, will you just stop saying that? I don't care what happens to me. I won't permit murder. You're too late. What do you mean? Do you really think Amos Pierce fell down those cellar steps accidentally? Eric. Mrs. Barkley had talked him into seeing Jim. I had to stop him. My God. So if you tell the truth now, it'll be the news for all of us. The Newcombs, Morley, for you and for me. Amos Pierce. What are we, Eric? What have we done? What have we done? Dad, we saved the mine. We saved the jobs of 200 men. And we saved Abbottsville. Who's going to save us? Sheriff Clark is here. Any news, Sheriff? Yeah. We found these on the riverbank between here and the Edwards place. Have you ever seen them before, Mrs. Newcomb? They're Mr. Jim's. You sure? Yes, he was wearing them yesterday. I put them out for him. What do you think, Sheriff? He took these off to swim the river? Well, that's how it looks to me. But it'd be a miracle if he ever made it, the way the current is this time of year. I put men to searching both banks of the river between here and Griffin's Ferry. But the way the river is, I, I have a hunch we'll never find Jim, alive or dead. How's Mrs. Barkley? She's still unconscious. I left word for Dr. Morley to get out here as soon as he returns from Wall River. But I'm afraid he's going to be too late. Well, if she dies, maybe it's a blessing that Jim did drown crossing that river. I'll see you later, Eric. All right, Sheriff.
I thought you might like some hot coffee. Mrs. Newcomb, you go up and stay with Mrs. Barkley. Morley should be here in a few minutes. Now keep the door locked and be careful. She knows it wasn't Jim Barkley in that room last night. Mrs. Newcomb, you and Mike don't want to have to leave here after all these years, do you? No. You just remember that. I'm not likely to forget it, Mr. Eric. You can buy people like Grace and Mike pretty cheaply. But a man like Morley must be rather expensive. He is. But he's worth it when you need him. Mrs. Barkley. Oh! oh. What? what? No! No! Oh. Jim, what have you done with him? Answer me, where's Jim? The medicine's beginning to work, isn't it, Mrs. Barclay? Answer me! He's dead. You killed him? No. Actually, it was an accident. It happened when we were in Arizona. His horse threw him. He was killed instantly. We were four days from the nearest town, so I buried him where he died. If you didn't kill him, why did you try to make me believe he was still alive? He did it for me. For you? To keep the mine open. To save Abbottsville. When the bank refused to lend me the money to keep going, Eric got it for me by using Jim's power of attorney to sell off some of his holdings. The Arizona land, the horses and cattle here in the ranch. We had to pretend Jim was alive in order to keep his estate from being settled and to keep you from knowing what we'd done. Oh, I intended to repay the money, and I still intend to. All I need is time, just a little time. And I'll pay back every penny. We'll make it up to you. And how are you going to make it up to Amos Pierce? Now you get out of my way. Let her go. I can't do that. Get out of... Get out of my... <laughs> no! No! Hey. Now, as soon as Morley gets Eric, you... Eric, stay out of it. You got what you wanted, didn't you? Just stay out of it, Dad. And what did you get out of it, Eric? The pleasure of saving a dead mine and a ghost town for your father? Or were you trying to save it for yourself? A dead mine and a ghost town wouldn't have been much for you to inherit, would it? What is? Ah! That's enough, Eric. Why didn't you answer her? Get her out of here. No, Mike. Let her go. We've done enough. Can't you see what she's trying to do? I see. That is not true. I wasn't doing it for myself. I'd like to believe that. You can. I'll take your word for it. 
and put down the gun. Give it to me, Dad. No, Eric. No, please. Give it don't. to me. Let me have no. The gun. Give it no. to me, Dad. Let no. me have the gun. You must let me have the gun. You have to. <laughs> No, Mike. Let her go. you still up? Oh, I wasn't sleepy. I guess I'm enjoying being at home too much. How was the dance? Oh, you know those Cattlemen Association dances. Same old stampede. Uh, by the way, Tom Porter is bringing our little Miss Audra home. Oh. I'm glad Audra went to the dance. I think in a way, Jim's death was harder on her than any of us. Oh, Jared. I want you to do a favor for me. Name it. I want you to go to Abbottsville and see Ben Abbott for me. See Ben? What for? Before I left, I persuaded the district attorney to drop charges against Ben. I felt that with Eric's conviction of the murder of Amos Pierce, that Ben had suffered enough. Well, it could be. Just what is it you want me to see Ben about? Well, I want you to find out how much it will cost to keep the mine operating for another six months. I think that the price of silver will be back up again, don't you? Possibly so, possibly so. But there's a little more to it than that, isn't there? Yes. Ben Abbott uh, was a desperate man, but he's not a murderer. He saved my life. And I think I'd like to try and save his town for him. Otherwise, a, a lot of innocent people may be hurt. And we, we don't want that. We don't need another ghost town. I'll tell you what. I'll leave first thing in the morning. Thank you. Good night, Mother. Good night. Jared. Hmm? Did you say that? Tom Porter was bringing Audra home. Yeah. Oh, he's a very nice young man. I got the feeling Audra felt the same way. Mm. She saved every dance for him. Well, that's very, very interesting. You know, I get the distinct feeling that you know something I don't. Apparently, Audra didn't tell you what happened at Harriet's wedding. No, what did happen? She caught the bride's bouquet. <laughs> Barkley's ready? Now, don't you worry about us. Oh, we ain't, are we, Jerry? <laughs> no, we ain't worried about them Barclays at all, Zach. <laughs> Three years running. Our ranch is one of the rodeo. We're gonna do it again just to keep you Barclays humble. Oh, no, I wouldn't count on that. I mean, you Mortons may be in for a little surprise. Well, it seems to me I recollect you saying the same thing last year. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep on laughing. 
Nick? Now, my papa says you Barclays are sporting. Well, now, your papa is right. What is your sport? Well, I got a thousand that says we win the rodeo. And I got five that says you don't. A thousand? A thousand. You got a bet? You got you a bet. <laughs> what was that all about? Hmm? Oh, you mean, you mean the Mortons? The Mortons. Yeah, well, it was just a little sporting proposition on the rodeo. Uh huh. How much? Oh, five hundred thousand. Want a piece of it? You got to be out of your mind. You don't want a piece of it. Well, somehow I have a little feeling about this rodeo. Who had a little feeling about last year's rodeo? And how much did that cost? Oh, well, now that was different. This year the Mortons. The are Mortons gonna... are going to walk all over us, and you know it. Zach baited you, and you bit. What would you have done? Passed. Passed. Nick, will you use your head? They're even stronger this year, and two of our hands are laid up. Well, now, whose side are you on? Ours, ours, but we haven't got a prayer. They've recruited every cowboy between here and Waco. Uh oh. I can win that rodeo for you. Joshua Watson, Baha. It's about time you got back. I just got a little busy in town, so thank you. You always get busy in town when there's work to be done here. You're going to thank me for it this time. For what? For Joshua. Joshua Watson, be my brother Heath. Howdy. He's going to win that rodeo for us single handed. Well, that's a pretty big chore. Uh huh. Can you rope? Better than most. You ever do any bulldogging? One more than my share. Can you ride a bronc? That's my best. That's your best, huh, Josh? Well, now, let's see. Charlie? Nick, wait a minute. Hey, Charlie! Yeah, Nick? Saddle up a baton and bring him here, will you? Hey, Charlie. I said, saddle up a baton and bring him here. I'll give my hand. All righty. Nick, what are you trying to prove? Oh, just take the man's word. He said uh, that was his best. But you know, Archie and Dale both got busted up trying to ride that horse. Mm. You going to ride that horse? Yep. Do you know what you were doing? I know. They call that horse a bad one. The name means devil. Got a lot of spirit. I would say, yeah. You no, know, I never rode a horse before to prove a point. Oh? What do I get for breaking him? Name it. How about the horse? <laughs> All right. You break him, he's yours. All right. You don't have to ride him. Well, I've been riding the devil all my life, he. He ain't throwed me yet. to ride this horse. Go oh, crazy. <laughs> That horse. Haven't you had enough? Ain't a man can't beat road, but ain't a horse can't be road. Mm. Easy, horse. Easy, boy. Ain't no need to fight. Cause I'm gonna break you. Alright, stay with him, Josh. Thank you. 
eating out of his hand two minutes after he stepped on him. Well, how does he measure up to the Morton? Better. You ask Keith when he comes in. But then we have a chance of winning this year. Well, with Joshua riding for us, we have a chance. Sure you wouldn't like to make a little bet, Jared? No, I wouldn't like to make a little bet. As a matter of fact, I'd feel a lot better if we called this whole thing off. For the first time in four years, we have a chance of winning this rodeo, and he wants to call it off. Why? Because it stopped being just a contest between two ranches. The whole thing's getting out of hand. Because I made a bet. Oh. Well, all the hands out there have made bets, too, you know. Nick, it has nothing to do with the betting. Now, you remember what happened last year, that fight with the Mortons in the saloon? Uh, boys were just letting off little steams, huh? Uh-huh. And then what followed that? They sold at our water holes. We had to spook their cattle. We should have done worse. Nick, can't you see what's happening? This isn't a rodeo anymore. It's turning into a feud. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Four years ago, we started this rodeo as a constructive way of handling the rivalry between us and the Mortons. Now, if it hasn't worked out, Perhaps we should call it off. Mother, this rodeo is my responsibility. I'm not about to call it off. Nick, what if somebody gets killed? That is also my responsibility. Sure you wouldn't like to make a little bet? Oh, you yeah. hard-headed. <laughs> Are you going to keep laughing like a blamed hyena all night long? I can't help it, Paul. I keep thinking about Nick Barkley. You know, he ain't ever going to learn his lesson. Man's got pride. You can't fault him for that. I ain't faulting him. It's his money that's going to buy us that new breeding stock in Denver. And, uh, I guess you plan to, uh, Go to Denver yourself and pick up those critters. Yeah, he's here. It's a pretty long trip to Denver. A couple of young fellas could get into trouble in a wild town like that. Well, we sure aim to try. You know something? Barkley's got no monopoly on pride. You boys have done everything. I've asked of you and more. And you've raised up just like I hoped you would. Tough, skilled, and you don't know the meaning of the word lose. Uh. Hey, Paul? Is that? In here, son. Oh, boy, I'm not glad you're up. Hey, where you been? Well, I've been in town. I was with a bunch of them Barclay hands. First off, I thought they was all drunk. They try and jump you, son? No, Pa. They all wanted a bet on the rodeo. Won't you tell them to line up? Well, yeah, sure. Told them they could bet any amount they wanted. I didn't figure it out till later. And then I found out they got this new hand out there. A black man. By the name of Joshua Watson. Talk is he's the greatest rodeo rider that ever got up into a saddle. Did you see him? No, I didn't see him, but... Oh, now, one black man ain't gonna scare us off. I got three champions riding for us and paying them more money than they've ever seen. Well, Pa, that's what bothers me. They know who we got riding for us, but they're betting on this Watson fella. They ain't any smarter than Nick Barkley. I know every good rider in the country, and I never heard of a Joshua Watson. You? No. Nope. Well, you can just stop your worrying, J.R. And just tell them to keep sending in the bets. 
Pa, I ain't worried. Uh. Well, okay, okay. Anyway, I, I figure he's as good as they say he is. We can always hire him for ourselves. Right, Pa? <laughs> <laughs> like I was telling your brother, a Morton doesn't know the meaning of the word lose. <laughs> Save some of that vinegar for the rodeo. Where can we get along fine? I'll be fit come rodeo time. You know, me and you's pretty much the same, Joshua. Well, how's that? Oh, I come from a sharecropping family. Hard work's all I've had. Most of it without pay. Well, like you, or the government cuts you free. This rodeo means everything to me, Joshua. I got a wife and two boys back home. And I've been saving every penny I earned for the past two years to bring them here. I bet every bit of it on you. I'll do my best. Yeah. Ready in a minute. Joshua, we never had anyone like you around here before. I guess my kind's rare in these parts. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. We, we've had a lot of Negroes working on this ranch. It's just that, well, you know, freed men come west, finding a new start. But we never had a hand that could do it all. Where'd you learn all this about ranching? It just comes naturally, I guess. Where are you from? Lots of places. <laughs> Most cowboys are. Where's your home? Place I'm at. Best shooting I ever saw. All I did was pull the trigger. Snake did the rest. How's that? Well, when the rattler sees a bullet coming, he strikes out at it. Oh, I guess. me 
They were coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home swing low sweet chariot coming for to carry Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry. Sound of it, I'd say your father must have been a preacher. No, he was a slave, Nick. A field slave. Nick! Bert! Oh. Bert, what happened? What happened? I was. I was chasing strays. They bushwhacked me. Well, who did it? Bert, who did it? The Mortons. The Mortons, huh? Joshua, take Bert to the ranch. Charlie, go on to the town and get the doctor. What are you going to do? I got a little call on the Mortons. You're not going out there in the dark. By the time I get there, it'll be morning. You shot Bert. Well, you spoke in our cattle. You're a liar. You be careful who you call in a liar. Well, if that wasn't an invite to a fight, I'd. Ah! Ah!
all right, Nick? Uh, of course I'm all right. I'm just fine. How'd you know I was here? Charlie told me. Uh, you sure you're all right? I don't need your help. I'm fine. Leave me alone. Keep your brother away from me, or next time I'll get it worse. All right, I'm ready. Uh, How's the eye feel? Fine, just fine. Sure you don't want a cold town? No, no, this will do nicely, thank you. Okay. said nothing. <laughs> I'd say that's the best one I've ever seen. They don't come any better. Hey, Nick, if you don't mind a little suggestion, I think the best place for that beefsteak is on a plate with some mashed potatoes. Who did it? Morton's. Ah, the Morton's. Well, you've just been itching for a fight with them, haven't you? And you finally got it. Well, they haven't heard the last of it either. Now, look, with that eye, you're not exactly ready for a beauty contest as it is, much less go back... Look, Jared, I'll worry about my eye. But they shot Bert. And they said that he was spooking their cattle, and it's a lie. Where are you going? I'm going up and have a hot bath. I'll be as good as new in an hour. Here, all you need now is a mashed potato. Uh. Forget it. What? What you're thinking won't do any good. Well, then maybe I better have a little talk with Rufus, try and reason with him. The reason things are the way they are is because Rufus can't be reasoned with. Bird shot. They stomped on Nick. And they've gone too far. I say we go over to their ranch and crack a few heads. Are you with us, Josh? Yep, I'm with you. Well, come on, let's go. Where are you boys heading? To the Mortons. Nobody leaves this ranch, is that understood? You've got a right to even things up. Any man that rides out to fight the Mortons is fired, is that understood? And the Mortons? That's where I'm heading right now, to have a little talk with them. <laughs> Rufus, for the last time, I came out here for only one reason. To get you to call this rodeo off. And you rode out here for nothing. Yeah, what do you want to call the rodeo off for? We hear you got a man who can win it for you all by himself. Yeah. Yeah, ain't he as good as they say he is? <laughs> Listen, J.R., why don't you go open the front door and, uh, let this man and the smell out of here. I'd like to remind you, gentlemen, a man's already been shot, badly wounded. He was lucky. I told my boys to shoot to kill any one of your hands that crossed my lines. And can't you see what a tragic mistake that is? Call it off before someone is killed. My boys have been looking forward to this for a year. And I'm not going to be the one to spoil their sport. I never thought I'd live to see the day when a Barclay would ask me to back off. Rufus, I'm not asking you to back off. I'm asking you to do what makes sense. You know, lads, up to the same thing. Morton's backing down. If you don't back down this time, it means a fight. So be it. And we'll settle this thing between us once and for all. You're just itching for a fight, aren't you, Rufus? Well, all right. The Barclays don't back down either. So if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you're going to get.
up. Let the horse do the work. How's he doing on time? Five seconds. He's almost there. Come on, Jim. Hang it in there. Hang it in there. Seven seconds. Well, he almost made it. Seven seconds ain't enough. Almost ain't good enough. He's got to stay on the animal eight seconds. All right, Jim, that'll be enough for today. Go get yourself a hot bath. How do you do it, Joshua? I just stay loose, Nick. I let the animal do the work. You see, staying on the horse eight seconds is important. But what's more important is making it look good. You see, the easier you make it look, the quicker you catch the judge's eye. Oh, Jared. How's Jim doing? He's doing pretty good. Joshua here is working with him. If those Morton boys had any sense, they'd start worrying. I think they already are, Nick. Charlie tells me he saw Zach and J.R. up on the ridge watching Joshua with a pair of glasses. <laughs> you don't say. Well, you tell Charlie. Next time he sees those two poor boys, invite them on down here. It's a shame for them to stand all the way back on that ridge and strain their eyes. And I think maybe I'll treat your eyes to some fancy roping. Nick's roping's pretty fancy, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it sure is, Joshua. Begging your pardon, Jared. You look a little worried. It ain't the rodeo, is it? No, no, no. It's... Well, I guess it's just a lot of things all together. But I guess if nobody panics, everything will work out all right. Silas? Silas? Oh, yes, Miss Hardra. Oh, you're looking at the almanac? Yes, ma'am. Well, if you're checking on the weather for the day of the rodeo, it'll be sunny and warm, temperature in the high 80s. I checked it yesterday. That's good, Miss Audrey. But I wasn't checking on the weather. The almanac has all the famous rodeo riders in it. Oh, that's right. And if anybody can ride rodeo like Joshua can, he just might be a champion. Was his name mentioned in there? Yeah. No, it doesn't seem to be. But of course, after we beat the Mortons, I bet they write a whole page on him. You're proud of him, aren't you? Yes, Miss Audrey. He's something. You know, Silas, we don't really know very much about him. Have you had a chance to talk with him? We've talked once in a while. Well, did he say anything about himself? No, ma'am. I guess that surprises you? A little. Joshua and I are the same in one respect. We are both black men. But we are different, Miss Audrey. Different as day is tonight. In what way? I've always worked in a big house like this one. I was treated special because I belong to the house. All my life, I've been indoors. And Joshua? He's from the fields, from the outdoors. He's never known nothing but hard work and the whip. He's a new breed. He's restless, he's proud, and he's searching. Searching for a place that he can call home. A place where he can stand up as a man. Joshua, I gotta drop this by the bank. Have you set up here? I'll join you in a minute. Okay. Give me a beer. Joshua Watson. You must be Rufus Morton. You know me? Well, everybody around here knows you Morton. You people don't exactly walk around on tiptoe, you know. <laughs> well, we have no need to. Truth is, you're not exactly a secret around here either. Can I talk to you? Talk? What you want to talk about? How would you like to work for me? I got a job. I'll pay you double what the Barclays are paying. Nobody can best what the Barclays are paying me. Oh, we'll see about that. I'll buy you a drink and we can talk. Bartender? I got a drink. 
Hey, boy. Are you refusing to drink with my paw? Man has a right to pick his own drinking company. Begging your pardon, Eve. The man asked me the question, and the answer is, yes, I'm refusing. Uh, you think you're too good to drink with us? You think what you want. You almost made it to the other world. Two kinds of men handle a gun like that. Outlaw or a lawman. And he's no lawman. Thing is quitting time. Oh, uh, hiya, Nick. How you doing? Oh, just fine. You know, I had a an idea that you just might be in town with the rest of the boys. No, not tonight. Me and my saddle got a lot of work to be done before rodeo time. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, oh, Heath was telling me that Rufus Morton offered you a job. Twice your pay. You turned it down. How come? Well, if Allman's retiring at the end of the month, I'd like his job. Oh, now, wait a minute, Josh. That's uh, that foreman's job. Why, that wouldn't pay half the money old Morton would. Well, you see, the way I look at it, it pays better. Well, you know something, Joshua? You might just be the man for the job. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Nick. Still having trouble with the Peterson case? No, no, I'm, I'm having trouble with my own stupid case. You know what I did today? I went over to the Mortons to see if I could talk him out of this rodeo. You what? Oh, you don't have to worry. I. I let that Rufus get me so mad, I told him we'd meet him head to head if that's the way they want it. Oh, that's better. No, it isn't better. Huh? Nick, let's talk about this rationally. Let's talk about what's best for the Barclays and the Mortons. Oh, now, come on, Mother. Well, think about it. Suppose we did cancel the rodeo. Well, we can't. The men have bet a full month's salary. They'd have to forfeit their money. All right, we can cover that. Is there another reason? Yes. What? Your ridiculous bet with Zack? No. Well, then what? For three years, the Mortons have stomped us at rodeo. And this year, thanks to Joshua, we have a chance to stomp them, and I'm not about to pass it up. Oh, Nick. Well, now, what is all this about? J.R., take off your hat. What do you want? Your new hired man, Joshua Watson. Oh, yes, he said you offered Joshua a job, and he turned you down. I didn't come here to hire him, Victoria. I came here to take him in. What? Do you mean arrest him? What for? I think he's an outlaw. You think? If I could get him to Phoenix, I could prove it. Joshua turns you down cold. You never could stand to be turned down. Turning me down had nothing to do with it, Victoria. I do business in Phoenix. And the last time I was there, the law was looking for a black man who rode with Coleman's Raiders. And you think that Joshua is the man that they're looking for? He fits a description. All that dirty. You show me an outlaw that would turn down the money you offered Joshua. What makes you think Joshua's the man they want in Phoenix? After what I saw in the saloon, I'm sure of it. Uh, Rufus, that's a pretty serious accusation. I trust you have the evidence to back it up. There's plenty of evidence in Phoenix. 
Well, I came here tonight to ask you to do the right thing. Oh, and uh, what was that? Turn Joshua Watson over to the law in Stockton. Well, now, Rufus, I thought I knew how much this rodeo meant to you, but I had no idea how low you'd stoop to win it. You either turn Joshua Watson over to the law tonight, or I'll come back in the morning and take him by force. streets of Laredo as I walked out in the street one day I saw a poor cowboy all wrapped in white linen all wrapped in white linen and cold as a clay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take me to green valleys and lay the sod o'er me. For I'm a young cowboy and I know I've done wrong. <laughs> Things are gonna be different for me and you, horse. The Barclays offered us a home, and we gonna take it. You seem to have a way with that horse. Oh, we got understanding. You're some man, Mr. Watson. The Barclays are mighty proud of you, and so am I. Well, thank you, Silas. They're counting on you to win the rodeo. I won't let them down. Of course, if he wasn't here, there wouldn't be no rodeo. And no trouble, huh? Yes. You asking me to ride out? I don't want to see none of the Barclays hurt. There's been a lot of trouble already, and there's a lot more coming. This rodeo means everything to Nick, and he's been good to me. He give me a job here at the ranch, give me a home. And ain't no way I'm gonna ride away from that. Joshua. Well? Rufus Morton says you're an outlaw. And unless we turn you over to the sheriff, he'll take you by force. We turned him down. Thank you, ma'am. No thanks are necessary if you're not the man they want in Phoenix. However, there's going to be trouble. It might even start a range war. And there's something I have to know before the fighting starts. What's that, ma'am? Did you ride with Coleman Raiders? No, ma'am. And you're not the man they want in Phoenix? No. Where are you from, Joshua? Well, I'm from a lots of places, Miss Barkley. Places with bad memories. Places I'd like to forget. on the east. Maybe he ain't coming. Morton's never backed away from a fight yet. He'll be coming. Nick. That's far enough, Rufus. Back off, Nick. You don't have a chance. Let's try us. Looking for a fight, we'll give it to him. Circle to the left.
You're running away, aren't you? I guess Rufus Morton was right. You did ride with Hardy Coleman. I was another man then. That was a long time ago. Why? I was set free, but that was all. I had no home, no family, no place to go. Hardy took me in, taught me to ride, used my gun. Gave me a chance to be a man, or so I thought at that time. We're offering you a chance, a real chance. But if you run, it's all over for you. And if I don't run, there's three years waiting for me in Phoenix. We're offering you a lifetime right here on this ranch. Three years might not sound like a long time to you. But for a man that's been a slave, it's eternity. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It ain't no use. I appreciate all you've tried to do for me, and I thank you for it. But ain't no way I'm gonna give up my freedom now. Then you're a coward. No, Miss Barkley. It's easy for you to judge me, ain't it? You with your fine ranch and your big fine family. Right? It wasn't always this way. When my husband brought me here, this was wasteland, barren land. We worked hard and suffered to make it what it is. Suffered? Suffered, you and your family? You don't know what suffering is. Suffering is watching your mother and father being sold on the auction block. Suffering is working hard all day till your body aches, give out and drop. Suffering is watching the world from the outside, knowing nobody wants you in. But times change, so do people. Not fast enough. Joshua, we've got to start somewhere. I'm sorry, Miss Barkley. Fighting. Longer. I'll go get some help. Yet. I'll be all right. Abaddon, the slaves used to travel by the stars. They'd find the Big Dipper and follow them off to freedom. Which way is freedom now? Which way do I go? For ammunition. Oh, how's yours? I got about six rounds left, so. Hold your fire! Hold it! Hold your fire! Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it! Joshua, get out of here! Ain't no need in fighting them, Nick. I'm the man they want in Phoenix. 
Your what? They had me right. I'm giving myself up. Paul, maybe it's a trick. We'll soon find out. Watson, did I hear you right? You're turning yourself in? Yeah, that's right. I'm turning myself in. Let's go. It's all over. Joshua. Sorry to cause you all the trouble, Nick. Well, why didn't you run? Well, I started to, but then I changed my mind. Changed your mind? What about? Yeah, I got to figure there ain't no way I can make a new life for myself until I find the right star. Yeah. Go get a job when I get out? It'll be waiting for you. All right. You had enough, Nick? Ain't a man that can't be throwed, and ain't a horse that can't be rode. from Paris. Yo, it's a clear blue sky, but without you it's rain and a world full of noise. Your voice is my refrain day by day, every moment that I'm looking through. All I see, all I dream, all I need is you. I need you like the beat needs a rhyme, like a poet needs pain to bring his words to life. Every day, every night, through the struggle and strife You're the light in my fight, the ultimate vibe I need you like the beat needs a rhyme Like a poet needs pain 